This is not a story of me going into Petco to get some cat food and then impulsively buying an aquarium full of fish. No, when my friend saw that my toddler son really liked her aquarium, she offered to buy him a betta fish. And I said, hmm, let me do some research. And I ended up buying it a filter, a heater, and the biggest betta tank I could find. Hi, my name is Irene with Girl Talks Fish. And after I got bitten by the betta bug, I basically needed to get more fish. And I decided what would fit would be a 20 gallon community tank. So basically fish that are peaceful and can live with each other. But there are so many options when you go to the pet store or, oh my goodness, the local fish store. How do I know I'm making the right choices? They're gonna be compatible with each other, be able to live in the same environment. So, I had already suffered my first untimely fish death by this point. My goal as a beginner was to cram as much fish knowledge as possible into this brain and avoid making any more mistakes. First came the incredibly long research phase, not necessarily by choice, but because I was kind of gradually over the course of two months buying an aquarium here, going to Craigslist, getting an aquarium stand there, slowly collecting the heater and all the equipment I needed. And during that time, every time I would go to the pet store, I would see some new fish that I'd never seen before and I would go home, Google it, and then I kept an Excel spreadsheet and record down things like what is the minimum tank size and number of fish that need to be in a school, the temperature, you know, that kind of thing. I guess YouTube quickly figured out that I was looking for fish care guides. And so it started just popping up all of these um, species profiles into my homepage. And that's how I found out about a lot of different species I had, again, never heard of, but now I'm like, ooh, I want this, I want that, you know, and I would collect all that information and then put it in the Excel spreadsheet. Once I had amassed all this information, now it was time to start filtering out fish based on kind of my needs. So obviously I'm trying to put them in a 20 gallon aquarium community tank. So they need to be able to fit in this tank size and get along with everyone. And then I heard a good piece of advice was to try to get fish, some fish that will swim at the top level, at the middle level and at the bottom level of your tank so that you don't have kind of empty areas of your aquarium. So I thought, okay, that's a really good idea. Um, another tip I found out online was also to not get fish of all the same color. So I feel like it's really easy to get maybe like all red fish or all blue fish and then you take them home and they really blend in together. So I really wanted to make sure, okay, these fish are of contrasting or kind of complementary colors on the, on the color wheel. Once I had figured out my list of fish that will swim at different levels of the tank and they have different colors and don't all look the same, then because I was a beginner, you know, I didn't know how many fish that you could put in an aquarium. I was told, you know, the forums were all yelling at me saying, don't go by the one inch per gallon rule. And I'm like, oh no, what do I do? So there is a website called, I'm probably not saying it right, uh, aqadvisor, aqadvisor.com, which I feel like, you know, again, it's not comprehensive, but I feel like it's a pretty good starting point, at least for a beginner. You just enter in your tank size, enter in your filter, and then it will kind of give you a percentage amount of how full your aquarium is. And the goal is to not you know, stay below 100% capacity. And then the final step of planning was basically kind of acting like an interior decorator. So I basically started off by sketching what the fish would look like in my aquarium. And I started off doing drawings at first um, with the different colors and trying to approximate the sizes. But then I quickly realized like, oh, you know, every time I can make a draw, like, you know, if it's not the right fish, I'm gonna have to erase it or start over again. So I just ended up taking pictures off of the internet and then putting them into PowerPoint, Microsoft PowerPoint. So I would roughly approximate the size of the fish. And then if aqadvisor.com told me, oh, you can, you need six of these and 11 of these, I would copy paste that many images and then move them around the tank and then see which combo basically was the prettiest. I would say um, my kind of two limiting factors were obviously what does it, what looks good, but also what was available at the pet and fish stores at the time. So I would kind of call around and find out, hey, do you have this and that? And I was willing to drive quite a ways in order to get that perfect combination of my dreams. Now, after all this painstaking research I did, can you spot some of the mistakes I made? <laughs> 
I can already spot three off the top of my head. So for example, let's go to this page over here where I tried to pair a betta fish with Von Rio Tetras. Now I have never actually personally kept Von Rio Tetras before, but after many years of experience, I can look at this combo and warning bells are already going off in my head. Uh, first of all, if you've ever seen these Tetras in the fish store, they are super fast little buggers. And I suspect if I paired them with a long finned betta fish, like I have in this picture, uh, that betta would probably get out competed for food during meal times. And anytime I dropped in food, the Von Rio Tetra would eat up everything um, and the betta wouldn't be too happy about it. The second red flag I see is actually something from a recent video I made about fin nipping fish. And that was from you guys when I was doing my research and I read all your comments. I now know that certain Tetras, such as Von Rio Tetras, can sometimes nip long finned or slower fish. So that would definitely be something I would have to watch out for. If I were giving advice to past newbie Irene, I would probably tell her maybe consider getting a betta fish with shorter fins or just like an entirely different centerpiece fish altogether that has short fins and is super fast. Another suspicious uh, combination would be this one, which I actually did try. So the Dwarf Barami, Green Neon Tetras, and Albino Coris. And what I found out is not all Dwarf Garami males especially are community fish. Peyton Manning is a flame Dwarf Garami that I have had, and he relentlessly bullied and pecked at and chased my poor albino quarries, who are so derpy and never hurt anyone. So that was definitely a lesson learned because everything I looked at said that Dwarf Garamis were community fish. So, okay, internet is not always right. Once I switched him out for Pikachu, the Honey Garami, which tends to be a lot more peaceful, Everybody was fine. They were doing great. Until the quarry catfish started having lots and lots of babies. And then the bio load or waste amount in the aquarium skyrocketed. I was having to do tons and tons of weekly water changes in order to get the nitrate levels down and not, you know, poison the fish in their own waste. And so I realized, oh, when AQ Advisor says that something's at 100 capacity, it's probably better to understock my aquarium and go, you know, like 75% capacity, which is a really hard lesson for beginners to learn because they want to see a tank full of pretty fish, right? Not, you know, emptiness everywhere. Unfortunately, all that preparation did not ultimately save me from going through some really painful, but really valuable real world experiences. Um, I definitely discovered that, wow, just because somebody says something on the internet does not mean it's true. Research is not bulletproof. And sometimes you just gotta test and see things for yourself in order to know what's gonna work for your aquariums. That being said, talking to some really experienced veteran fish keepers has been a lifesaver for me. So if you are feeling discouraged in the fish keeping hobby, don't give up. You know, I've put together kind of a short playlist of some of the foundational beginner friendly tutorials that I think will hopefully be really encouraging for you and help you get on the right track. Take time to enjoy your aquariums and I'll see you in the next video.